Hello again. Now today I just want to show a project that I've been working on. This is a combination of several things that I have worked on in the past. You may recognise this case. This came from a soldering iron a station that uh, I disassembled um, a few videos ago. This circuit here is a any 555 timer based um, square wave generator, which I also showed in a previous video. So I just apply some power and you can hear that there is a, a tone coming out of the speaker. That's the volume control. This one here, just the frequency. And uh, over here, I've got a little LM386 um, amplifier, which uh, I've also talked about in previous videos. Okay, I've cleared the bench down now. I've got the two amplifier circuits that I intend to show ready to go. So here I've got uh, a Darlington transistor circuit and here I've got um, an LM386 circuit. Now this was going to be two projects but uh, I decided it makes more sense to just make one. So what I'm doing is putting together a square wave generator and combined amplifier. So this little unit here will be used to uh, generate a square wave that I can insert into uh, a circuit to uh, test that the signal is going through and getting amplified properly but it's also useful to have uh, an amplifier connected to a speaker so you can actually hear what the square wave generator is doing. So if I just turn the power on. Now that's the square wave generator going. This is the volume actually on the square wave generator itself. And the amplifier also has its own volume and you notice there's a bit of interference there um, LM386 circuits are notorious for um, interference if they're not built correctly and uh, undoubtedly this one here is not quite to spec so I'm going to have to either um, modify that maybe add some more caps um, or sort out the grounding and or sort out the grounding um, I might just use a switch arrangement to make sure that um, when the amp isn't in use it's actually disconnected from the um, from the power because if I disconnect the uh, the amp entirely or the signal generator entirely you just get that sort of clicking noise which isn't good Now just turning that off for the moment, that's running off a 5 volt bench power supply so I'm going to use um, a USB cable just to power it. Um, I've already checked the um, current draw and it's only a few milliamps, certainly no more than about 50 even with the amplifier going. Now by running off USB it means I can have it mains powered if I want um, but if I need to have it isolated for a particular circuit I can also use something like a little power bank um, to also power it. Now as far as um, the sort of inputs and outputs, obviously I've got three potentiometers. Uh, it's important that I do have two separate volume controls because th that is going to uh, control the volume of the signal coming out of this into the test equipment or into the piece of equipment being tested. Whereas that control there is just controlling the volume on the speaker. So I'm going to have the signal from this coming out probably on something like a three and a half mil jack. There's an old one there. I've got I've got some new one. Well, at least one new one there. Um, and I'm going to need a switch or two. I've got quite a few assorted switches, both old and new, um, so that I can decide whether I want um, 
this circuit or some sort of external music source or nothing going into the amplifier and as I say that may be tied up with actually just turning the amplifier off as well if there's no signal going into it but the uh, signal from the, the uh, NE55 will come out um, through this three and a half mil jack all the time that won't be controlled by the the switch as to whether the sound is also coming out the amplifier so that's the plan it's going to involve drilling various holes in this panel here most of the wiring i've sort of figured out and then it's also as i said previously i'm going to have to figure out how to reduce the noise on the lm386 as much as possible okay so i've rewired the volume control on the lm386 amplifier now it's turned on at the minute you can see the five volts on the bench supply there you might just be able to hear uh, the hum on the speaker now the any 555 circuit is not connected up yet but if i just take the uh, input from that or the output from that connect it to the input on the amp You can hear that just works fine. So, by using a bit of shielded cable, so I've grounded the uh, can of the volume control itself, and I've also grounded the shields around the uh, audio in and audio out from the volume control, and that seems to have fixed the problem with the uh, clicking noise uh, on the amp when there was no input signal. I'm using my pillar drill to drill out the holes on the front panel for the connectors. So I've marked all the um, centres on the um, front panel and then I've punched them with uh, a centre punch. And then I've drilled them out using a wood bit. And uh, I'm using a wood bit because it has a locating point on it which uh, makes it much easier to get the drill um, central to the uh, punch mark and then afterwards I'm using a tapered hand reamer to actually enlarge the holes to the correct size this hole is a pre-existing hole so I just need to enlarge it I'm going to use a, a drill bit more commonly associated with metal drilling because the uh, tip of this should fit neatly in the hole now I probably could just uh, use the uh, hand reamer and enlarge it uh, using that as the plastic's quite soft. I've gone for a smaller speaker because the, uh, the one I was using originally is really just too big for the case. So I think this is a 3 watt one and this is a 2 watt one. Uh, but hopefully it should still sound suitably loud enough. Okay, well it's time to put the lid back on. So everything is wired up, all the soldering is done. I put a little bit of hot glue on some of the connectors, or on that connector there, and also the um, the LED, the back of the LED, um, because they're just push fit. Um, it was a real pain, to be honest. The uh, grounded wiring that I put in here, I had to redo because the grounds were shorting out with the next pin. The audio selector switch so i've got a switch there which selects between the uh, frequency generator and the phono on the front um, and also has a neutral position that was just too small and fiddly that was this one down here i was also using that to switch the power to the amp and i've just had to abandon switching the power to the amp um, so the amp is just on all the time and uh, this pot here was a, a linear pot so it was this one here I think and um, that's not right for volume control so I switched it for a log pot but it all seems to be working it's running off um, a USB connection now and um, I'm going to put the lid on and sort out the knobs and uh, give it a bit more testing okay well here it is all together and complete 
I've uh, super glue fresh feet on the bottom and I have labelled it up with my label maker. So, turn it on, select frequency, frequency adjust, that's the volume for the frequency, and that's the overall amp volume there, that one there. Now, I've shown that before, so the extras are the frequency out. So if I plug a cable in, so this is a mono uh, three and a half mil jack socket. I've got another speaker here. So if I ground one side of the speaker, And I'm going to take the uh, the output let's get that wire in properly or better at least and I'm going to take the output and feed it through a capacitor so turn it back on again so that's the frequency so if I stop the sound going to the amplifier by putting it in the neutral position and then connect this up here I need to make sure the volume is up as well on the actual frequency generator itself and you may just be able to hear so I'm getting the frequency out um, of this little speaker So that's demonstrating that um, the sound or the signal is coming out of this jack socket uh, even when the um, amplifier is not connected to that circuit so there's no sound coming out the in inside speaker. Now the other feature this has is the amp in. Now I don't have a handy source of uh, input so uh, what, but what I can do is I can plug a little adapter in here and then feed the um, output from the frequency generator back into the amp input. So if I select amp in and um, maybe adjust that volume down a bit So by connecting the output to the input, the sound is going back in, or the signal is going back in and going through the amp, but through the amp input. Now I've only connected the signal line, I haven't connected up the grounds, because actually of course it's grounded internally. But for an external source I'd obviously have to connect both the signal and the ground. So there we are, just a quick demonstration of the various features. I think all in all that's worked out quite well. Um, I'm not sure how much I'm going to actually use the unit, um, but certainly there have been times when, when I've really felt that I needed a little amplifier to check the signal from something like a record player, um, or needed uh, just a, a signal that I could feed into a circuit. So. This little unit will do both of those things, so I think that's uh, that's going to be useful uh, in the future. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and if you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to Mr. RG Stuff.